in your life and give you the kind of victory that will set you free and allow you to lift up your hands in this place and give him praise. Without any guilt, without any shame. Amen. Knowing that, that you've been liberated. Somebody say, I've been liberated. So, so, so the sin, the, 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 the carnal life demonstrates that human nature and the knowledge that we acquire is inadequate. That's why people go uh, to Alcohol Anonymous. They've been there 20 years. 20 years they go to meetings. And they, when they go to the meeting, they say, the first thing they say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm an alcoholic. Lennox ain't had a drink in 20 years, but still confessing that they're alcoholics. When my Bible tells me, whom the Son, are y'all are you walking with me? I said, my Bible tells me, if, if Jesus has set me free, then I'm free indeed. I don't care how many years I drank. If, listen, if I've been drinking 45 years of my life, but on, on Sunday morning, he broke the power of darkness in my life, I'm not going to confess I'm still an alcoholic. I'm going to confess that Jesus Christ and his blood has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. Who am I preaching to it here? And I don't care what you say. Talk about, yeah, we'll see next week. You can see next week all you want, but on this day, I'm free. On this day, I'm not drinking. On this, I wish I had some help in here. Hey, I, let the Tomorrow, take care of yourself. On this day, I've been set free by the Lord. Who will deliver me from me? The only body that could deliver you from you is the one that made you. His name is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. He is the way maker. Ah, God help me. Help me. He, he, he is the one that can give you the strength to overcome whatever your issues are. That's right. He is the one that he is the equalizer in your life. And he will never become the equalizer in your life if you don't come and take all of him. You can't take him in bits and pieces. See, that's how the world is. This is not something you do by installments. Either you come all the way in or you're not all the way in at all. You can't take him in parts. I wish I had some help. Yeah. See, see, the, 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 the church world today says, you know what? Don't tell me about God. You can't tell me. I, don't, don't tell me. I know God. See, that, that's, the, that's the spirit we're dealing with today. Nobody wants you to tell them anything because they want to serve God on their own terms. I said they want to serve God on their own terms. And what they're saying is, listen, listen, I know I got problems. And God knows I got him too. Just leave me alone. Leave you alone. Who will deliver me from me? Well, guess what? If you stay out there, you're never going to get delivered. Because you have proved already you can't deliver yourself. Who am I preaching to right now? You know, sometimes I ain't going. I'm mad. I ain't doing. Listen, you can't stop doing what you've been doing. The reason why there's a church. The reason why there's a congregation of believers, so that when we come in here with our mess, God has the ability to break down into his lowest common denominator and give us the kind of victory that we've been longing for all of our lives. Amen. I wish I had some help in here this morning. Who can deliver me from me? Jesus. He's able to do exceedingly. He's able to do abundantly. Oh, you used to be a homemonger? Get in the church. He can deliver you from being a homemonger. Oh, you used to like gambling? He can deliver you from gambling. He, if you lied and talked about people, he has the power to deliver you from that. Oh, you can't put the bottle down? Get inside here. Get in. Let Jesus get on the inside. If he really gets on the inside of you, he has the power to make you new. He said, for if any man be in Christ, do I have anybody in here? The reason why we're still struggling, because he's not in us. If he was in us, we would be new. For if any man be in, or we were in him, we would be new. All things would what? And behold, you listen, you ought to want yourself to become the person that you always wanted to be. You, you, you ought not just settle for who you've been. 
Because who you've been ain't satisfying to you. It ain't satisfying to nobody around you. I, I wish I had a real, real help in here. If, if it was, you, you would celebrate who you are. People would celebrate the person that you used to be. But ain't nobody celebrating that person. In fact, folk are tired of seeing that person. And you are tired of seeing that person too. But if any man be in Christ, don't play around. I ain't talking about just being in the church. I'm talking about being in Christ. Being in the hope of glory. Cast your cares really upon the Lord because he cares for you. Do I have anybody in here this morning? I ain't talking about you part saved. I ain't talking about you half saved. I ain't talking about you just been to church on a few Sundays. But I mean you came to church and you gave up your whole nature. You said, Lord, I messed up from the floor up. But I'm tired of living like this. I know there's something better for me. So I came to Jesus just as I am. Do I have anybody in like this? He told me this morning, if you really mean business, he'll give you the deliverance that you can't give yourself. You can't bring yourself out. He told Moses. He told Abraham. He said, Abraham, know for surety that for 430 years, your people will be in bondage. But at the right time, I'm going to bring them out. What you're looking at this morning is somebody that God brought out. And when he brought me out, I came out with a shout. I came out with a praise. I came out with a hallelujah. I came out running for Jesus. And I ain't tired yet. When he brings you out, you'll bring somebody else out. When he really brings you out, you won't be the hypocrite you used to be anymore. He'll turn your life around. Place your feet on a rock to stay. Somebody say, Lord, deliver me from me. Say yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to wonder why I had so many struggles. And the Lord said, don't wonder. Most of the people you're pastoring, most of the people you're ministering to, that's their struggle. And if you don't know the struggle that they're in, you won't be able to bring them out, to preach to them on the level that they're on. They won't be able to communicate with you. You won't be authentic enough to tell them that they don't have to stay where they are at. That they can live better than that. They can rise above their DNA. They can rise above how their father was. How their mother was. How that no good church was. And you can begin to live this life. Paul said, in him I live. And in him I move. And in him I have my being. Today I can tell you, Shanine, I can do all things. I can go in a bar and not take a drink. I can go around drugs and not get high. I can walk around women and get tempted but not get exploited. Do I have a witness in here? I can see the money I have in my pocket. It might get low, but still give God his 10%. Because when he brought me out, he brought me out with power, with authority to tell somebody else, you don't have to stay there. He's able, able. Paul said, he said, I'm miserable. If I got to stay like this, my life would be miserable. Imagine you preaching to others and you need somebody to preach to you. That's miserable. Imagine you lost all credibility with the people that are closest to you because you can't stop doing what you do. Hey. 
You can't stop being angry. It's in your DNA. You inherited that from somebody in your family lineage. It was passed down. It is what we call sin. Sin nature. See, DNA deals with, with certain, certain types of things about you and me that we look like our, our relatives, our hairlines, and the color of our skin. That DNA, DNA is, is a match to the person or the people that we come from. We don't just get their features, but we also get their strengths and their weaknesses. So what you're doing and the struggles you have has been in your family for years, for centuries. And it's in you now while you're in the church. So God wants you to get free so it doesn't continue any longer. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So Paul wasn't talking about unsaved people. He's talking about people that are saved that come to church. People that come to church. I hear people saying, ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites coming in. Yeah, but guess what? They're being worked on. As Dick said this morning, he said, he said this, he had a car accident. And he said, because he had insurance. Watch this. Because he had insurance, he was able to now take his car and put it in the shop. And the part of his car that was hit could not be repaired. So they were going to give him a new part to make the car look like it was new. He said, there's an authentic mechanic in this building. He was talking about me. He said, there's a real mechanic in here. And he said, and God is using this mechanic to, to make your car new. But if you don't bring your car in the shop, it can't be worked on. Is not running right. You know your car is not running right. It hasn't been running right for years. But when you come in, you don't tell the mechanic everything that's wrong. You just want a little more gas so you can keep driving. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just keep driving. I want my car to be new. For if any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. We're so strung out on things today. TV. Can't read our Bible, but we can watch 10 hours of TV. 10 hours of TV. Then the time you pick your Bible up, you can't read it before two or three minutes because you can't focus because it's not in. You don't have an appetite for it. Yeah. You have an appetite for carnal things yeah. because you're carnal. Yeah. Sold under sin. Let's go. And you'll stay that way as long as you don't really know Jesus. Mm. Yes. See, people say they know him today, but they really don't know him. That's right. They know about him. They know the church that he ordained, but the church is so flaky because the people that go to church are so flaky. People think that they're all right, Christian. You ain't much different than I am. But there are some people that really are pursuing God. There are some people that really have changed. I said there are some people they really have made up their minds yes. that they rather follow Jesus than yes. 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 Who will deliver me from myself? Your mama can't do it. Your, your, your parents try to tell you, stop, stop, boys. Do, look here, come on, you gotta, you gotta get better. Guess what? Even your parents can't deliver you from you. The people that fed you and raised you can't deliver you from you. Your husband can't do it. You ain't listening to him. You want nobody can deliver you from you but the one that made you. And he wants to deliver you from you. But 
but you got to come you got to come for real I said you got to come for real listen I, I, I remember some 20 something years ago when my life stood me right in the face and I saw myself for who I really was it wasn't something that I liked I didn't want it Rita listen having a job and having money and having health, that don't mean nothing life does not consist of the abundance of things you can get a new house and a new car that only make you feel good for a minute so when I had a chance to really look at my life and see what I had become I didn't like it so somebody said that there is a Jesus that can help me I didn't wait till I got to church I was in a bathroom in Panama in that bathroom I lifted up my hands and I said if you are who they say you are and you can take this mess and do something with it. I said, I promise to give you the rest of my life. I think he heard me. Because I haven't turned back since that time. Have I had challenges? Absolutely. Because I, I didn't really know what I was made of. I didn't really know that, that there was parts of me that still needed to be brought out of me. There, there was there was some stuff that just wouldn't shake just because I said get out. Just because I fasted and prayed a few days. There was some stuff that lingered. And there was, there was some stuff that I thought I got rid of it, but it only came back. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from me? Thanks be unto God. Thanks be. Listen, I couldn't imagine myself preaching and living this life. It was a lie. I don't know how some people do it. How do you live with a lie? When the only person you're fooling is yourself. The people that are closer to you know who you are. You're fraudulent. You together, but I know you're not. 
Keep singing a little. Oh, yeah. I want to put 